Welcome to the Guardian Analytics Alert in the Life series. This is Michael McDermott, the Director of Customer Services. Today, we will be looking at an example of account takeover from Guardian Analytics Online Retail. As is always the case when reviewing an alert, our goal is to build a mental story from the available information in order to understand what may have happened when the user was interacting with the online banking application. Once we have decided on a likely story, we will decide to either dismiss the alert and move on or open a case to initiate a fraud investigation. The following will be from the perspective of the fraud analyst. Here I see the high risk alert that I am reviewing. The question I am attempting to answer is, what happened during the session? The first step in the alert review process is to focus on the activities in the alerted session. I see that the user logged in successfully, passing the email-based multi-factor authentication. I can further see that this was done from a new device because the online banking application reports a successful new device registration. Following the successful login and device registration, I see multiple changes to personal information and security settings. These include a change to the username, the password, and to the out-of-band authentication channel used in the MFA process. These are activities that have been deemed risky because they are infrequent activities for this user. The story I have so far is that someone successfully logged in from a new device and then immediately modified the username, password, and out-of-band authentication channel for this account holder. Would my account holder make all of these changes at once? It is possible, but unlikely. Therefore, I should consider this suspicious and see what else I can uncover about this session to further fill out my mental story about who took these actions. FraudMap has many additional attributes that provide context for the activities in this session. I will begin by reviewing the risk factors in this session. FraudMap risk factors call your attention to areas of risk in a session. Looking at the risk factors for this session, I see the following risk factors. New location, unusual location, network provider, operating system or browser changes, user agent string change. Starting with the risk factors for location and network provider, I see that this session originated from an IP address in Minsk, Belarus, and the provider is ExtraCloud. Looking back through the account holder's history, I can see that the account holder has 12 months of consistent use of IP addresses located in Germany originating from the provider TIP Connect. The remaining risk factors are for the user agent string and the OS and browser derived from the user agent string. I will focus on the OS and browser to understand the account holder's typical usage pattern versus what appears in this session. Historically, the account holder accessed online banking from a Mac operating system running a Firefox or Safari browser. In this session, the user is running a Microsoft Windows-based system with an Internet Explorer browser. We have seen the account holder use Windows and Internet Explorer in the past, but it has been over seven months since this combination was last used, and this OS and browser combination has never been used from this location. I now have enough information to build possible stories about what may have happened in this session. Remember, our goal is to quickly decide if the session can be dismissed or if further investigation or immediate action is required. Let's review what I have discovered so far and who I believe the user may have been. I have a session where a user successfully authenticates and registers a new device. This on its own is not concerning, but when combined with a new location, provider, and OS browser, my concern is elevated. Once authenticated, the user changes the username and password for the account and creates a new out-of-band authentication channel for the MFA process. This would be less concerning if this came from a known location, provider, and OS browser combination. When taken in context with a new location, provider, and OS browser, however, this is very concerning. One possible story, given these facts, is that the account holder is traveling and has decided to update the account information. A more likely story is that the account holder is not traveling and someone other than my account holder has accessed this account and performed actions that have compromised it. The activities and risk factors in this session warrant opening a case for further investigation. This alert should not be dismissed. The following are some suggestions for next steps once a case has been initiated. Check for any travel notes on the account. Perform a review of debit or credit card activity to see if travel can be corroborated. Call the account holder. 
If travel cannot be confirmed and the account holder cannot be reached, freeze the account. This example session came from a confirmed case of account takeover. After the fraud analyst confirmed that there were no travel notes on the account, the account holder was contacted. During that conversation, the fraud analyst learned that the account holder's PayPal account had been compromised the day before. This external account compromise could have led to the compromise of the online banking account and the account holder's email account, most likely through password reuse by the account holder across accounts. The possible email account compromise likely explains how the criminal was able to pass the email-based MFA challenge in this session. The online retail account was temporarily frozen and the account information was changed by the financial institution. Because of the quick and timely action of the fraud analyst, there was no loss as a result of this account takeover. This concludes the Alert in the Life story. Please comment on the page hosting this video or send comments and suggestions for future Alert in the Life videos to AITL at guardiananalytics.com.